Welcome to the Greater Southington Business Podcast, the local podcast that tells you stories behind the products, services, and nonprofits you interact with every day. This episode is sponsored by Northshire Consulting, your local independent investment advisory firm. Here's your host, Brian Williams. Hello and welcome. On this episode, I'm here with Peter Callahan from Fresh Perspectives. Hello, Peter. Hello, Brian. Um, so, again, my name is Peter Callahan, and my business is called Fresh Perspectives. So, I do really focus on leaders and entrepreneurs okay. doing coaching and training. So, working one on one with leaders, okay. um, as well as training teams and employees, and usually small and medium sized businesses. Small, medium, meaning uh, how many employees? You probably work with entrepreneurs, solos, up to how many? A lot of startups, um, solopreneurs, but then really up to usually around 300, three or wow. 400 people okay. tends to be the largest. I've done some gigs where I'm kind of the in house trainer for a while, or okay. you know, people have tried to bring me on full time, but I, I really love helping lots of different organizations. Yeah. It really gets me going. Okay. I can see that. So with the solo, let's uh, start at the beginning. Your solo entrepreneurs who are maybe in their in their first year, what's that journey like with those type of clients? Sure, yeah. I mean everybody's different, right? It's there's a, there's a great book out there called The E Myth. E Myth okay. Revisited, Michael Gerber. And he really talks about entrepreneurs and humans, I think in general, but entrepreneurs kind of actually being split usually into three different parts of ourselves. So we have the technician, the manager, and the entrepreneur. And, you know, maybe you kind of understand those just as I say them, but the technician is most business owners tend to be great. They're a great mechanic. They're a fantastic um, real estate person. They really love, you know, finance, whatever industry they're in. And they're really great at doing the, the work and doing the job. But there's these other two parts of business that are really important, being a manager. Sure actually organizing the administrative piece, maybe managing others, and then the entrepreneur who's got the high-level vision, the strategy, the business plan, right. those aspects. And all of us have a little bit of each one of those in us, but most of us tend toward one of the three and have a different balance. So it's fascinating to start to uncover what our strengths are mm. right, and what we're each really good at and why we love or hopefully enjoy to some degree the work we're doing. I guess that's one other part. If you have no interest in learning more about the industry that you're in or really can understand how it's helping others, I find that really decreases people's motivation to keep going and to have the grit and persistence it takes to be in business. It takes a lot, as you know. Yeah. Do you find that those um, entrepreneurs who are maybe in their first year or so, do they have that sort of self-awareness where they know what they're good at or not good at or do a lot of them... Sort of come in with a cocky attitude and say, I can do it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you say that. I kind of think of myself as a, as a recovering jerk. Mm -hmm. So I would say even for me as an entrepreneurship major in college, I went to University of Rhode Island okay. in entrepreneurship. I thought I knew a lot graduating with a degree, but I came out um, and kind of faced the harsh reality of trying to start a business, figuring out what I wanted to do. My first business was, uh, was actually boat cleaning. Okay. I was still in college with my brother, and we started Calbros because we're the Callahans. Right. Calbros boat cleaning, big or small, we clean them all. Nice. And uh, <laughs> we we were faced with the harsh realities of every aspect of even this tiny little business of trying to find customers and sure. not get in trouble with the harbor master, or whatever it might be, and right. like, go through all these aspects. So I would say it's not to anyone's fault, right? We all have different levels of awareness, mm -hmm. but I think no matter how much you learn or how much you come in knowing. Until you're doing something and having the experience, trying to predict, it's kind of what's fascinating about planning and business planning in sure. general, like we were talking about, it's hard to know what's going to come down the pike. So I think that's why I love working with people because I don't have all the answers either. And my job as a coach is not to have all the answers, but to help build capacity, build resources, and hopefully see some of those blind spots. Right. So I like, I go, I often go back to this African proverb that I love. Okay. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Mm -hmm. That's just what I feel like I'm doing with people is just joining them on whatever stage of the journey I can be useful. And sometimes it's one session and sometimes it's a couple of years and yeah, it always kind of unfolds however it's supposed to. How often do you bring some of those business owners together? Do you, are you out talking to something and somebody clicks and you say, wow, they, they've got a skill set or they're in a similar position with another business owner. Do you ever bring them together and do some group sessions? 
I, I have um, it, usually through other organizations. So the Southampton Chamber of Car Commerce and Barbara Heckler, I think, sure. does an amazing job of this. So I think the chamber winds up being a fantastic place for that. Um, and then I think in my sort of other role, um, I'm also the leadership and engagement director at Copper Beach Institute okay. in West Hartford. So we are a mindfulness retreat center, believe okay. it or not. So there, actually, just last night, um, I was there with the Hartford Young Professional Group. Mm -hmm. And so we put out, so between you know, Fresh Perspectives, Copper Beach, and HYPE, that's what their acronym, um, we put it out to the whole you know, group of thousands of young professionals throughout Hartford, you know, come join in this session for Mindfulness for Busy Professionals. Yeah. And it really spoke to dealing with the overwhelm and the stress and the, all the sure. uncertainty that's out there. And we had over 30 people in the room, which was really a gift, and just to, just to get to be there. And these people from all different places, we had folks from Pratt Whitney and Travelers, small business startup entrepreneurs, yeah. like a whole realm of people, and actually very diverse Less so in age, right? It was the young professionals, right. but certainly really good mix of gender and races and backgrounds and experience. So I think there's more and more opportunity, though, to do that. Yeah, to your point, it's a great question. Yeah. 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 And even the smaller groups in that, you know, four or five people. Exactly. Yeah. So I have done some mastermind groups a, a while ago. I was a, I'm a recovering financial advisor as well. So just like, you're like yourself. That was a past of mine. Yeah. And we, I, I was part of a couple of mastermind groups where we'd have small groups of 10 to 20. And sort of usually around a theme, either, either everyone's either a business owner or they're in a sales role, or it could be marketing, yeah. but uh, kind of coming together around one theme. And that's it's same thing. If you want to go far, go together. And just we've yeah. all got different strengths that hopefully we can find a way to make them complementary so they support each other and not do that. And that's the one thing that's good sort of about this, this new economy is as you figure out what you're good at and what you're not good at, you can find people to help you with what you're not good at, you know, whether it's you know, through one of the shared, you know, whether it's Upwork or, or one of those type of, if it's marketing or social media, you can find somebody who can handle that. You don't have to hire somebody full time to do it. You can, you can share somebody. So that's, I think the earlier on you're able to identify those weaknesses and stick somebody else on those tasks, the better off you are. Exactly. And if I can, that's what I love about your approach with Northshire yeah. and the Chamber of Commerce. The just incorporation of all these different professionals. It sounds like really with this foundation of trust. Like, hey, right. we're all in this together. We're putting our names out there and we have to follow through and be consistent. If our name's going to be on this brochure, sure. we're going to be all meeting with each other's clients. The moment someone does something lacking integrity, that's going to ripple through that network Absolutely. immediately. So it really kind of gives another level of, of trust, right. I think. And trusted professionals who we might, you know, just be Googling or hoping for reviews right. to help us check out where you kind of, you build in that, like, this is reviewed. I put my name on it. Sure. So my reputation's on line along with this person's work. And I think that right. helps us all find those professionals a little easier. Yeah. Because as much as we think everything is moving to online, most business relationships are still an introduction or referral or <clears throat> you meet somebody out at a networking event, it's, the, the business is coming from there. Very rarely does somebody's phone ring and say, well, you've got three positive reviews on, <laughs> you know, I mean, you do get some of that. Once but, in a while. Yeah, it depends on the industry, obviously. Exactly. But, um, Reminds me of the old adage, when all things are equal, people do business with people they like. Sure. When all things aren't equal, people still do business with people they like. Right, right. So you don't always have to be the lowest cost provider or the fastest producer you know, if you're, if you've got integrity, if you're trustworthy, I think there's a really good chance that you're going to, and what is it? The, it's five times more expensive to find a new client than it is to retain an right. existing client. And I think a lot of us in business forget that pretty often. And we get, you know, attached to finding that next client, growing our market sure. share, whatever it might be. And we don't put as much attention as really a, would have the hard, highest return on investment. On this. Right. Like, how do we right. do the best we can for who? already we're working with right and your good clients are ultimately your best salespeople because they're out telling your story more so than than you are and they're telling it to a different audience that you haven't even met yet exactly. yeah those raving fans are the yeah exactly. goes like purple cow right and it can work the other way too obviously so that's why you want to do it <laughs> of course people are much more likely to talk about a bad experience right that negativity bias will yeah. get us yeah yeah <laughs> so how about some of these bigger organizations when you move up now so now you've moved from the solopreneurs to now maybe they have two or three employees and, and now they're in suddenly more of a leadership role. How does that uh, transition? How do you work that transition from somebody who went into business for themselves to a leadership? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it reminds me of kind of starting a family. 
Yeah. Right. It's like maybe when you're you grow up with your parents, you don't necessarily get to choose who your parents are. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. Right. But now you're getting into business, and it's amazing how partnerships form. But one thing leads to another, and same thing. Usually, there's some some commonality, something we like in each other, and it often starts out just like a relationship. There's a nice honeymoon phase. Like, yeah. Oh, this is great. We're all excited. We're putting in all this energy. And sustainability comes into play pretty quickly, mm -hmm. not only with how much time and effort are we putting in, are we kind of balancing our whole lives, but the, the interpersonal part, right? Like what makes you tick? What's, what's my approach to this? Are you more strategic and I'm a little bit more flexible and go with the flow? You know, all these things come in. It's really fascinating to, I, I love working with those dynamics because everyone's different. Right. And we kind of say humans are messy. Sure. That's not a bad thing. It's just reality. Yeah. <laughs> if things yeah. are, things are uncertain. Might get a little bit on the cheesy side for business, mm -hmm. but there's this quiz out there called the five love languages, five love languages. And what this quiz tests is basically what are the ways in which you like to give love or let's call it appreciation for business. What are the ways you show appreciation and what are the ways that you like to receive appreciation? And although it's called love languages, it might sound a little cheesy. What happens as soon as I bring these five up with any small team like this, it immediately resonates with everyone. So I'm curious for our listeners out there, which one of these feels like it resonates for you for the way that you prefer to sort of receive appreciation or love from others. So there's quality time, acts of service. So doing things for each other, um, words of affirmation, Physical touch, which obviously gets a little iffy in work, but you know what I mean? Some sort of like, and you can think of that as body language as right. well. And then gifts, right? Actually giving things. Um, and there's a real even balance between each of us. So what do you think for yourself? If you just think about this for yourself, do I prefer quality time? Do I like these acts of service? That tends to be mine more. Sure. Other people, it's really about the words of affirmation. What, yeah, what yeah for me, it's I would say it's about the service aspect because the words are great, but if there's nothing to back it up, I mean, you can talk about honesty and integrity all day long, but if your actions don't support that, sure. you've got issues. Sure. Exactly. And part of this is all self-awareness. Sure. So we can do this through Myers-Briggs, right? Finding out your sort of letters. I, I really enjoy DISC, so using this DISC training. They're all based on Jung, like Jungian psychology and kind of putting us into these four quadrants, plotting us out in there. Um, and the other great one, and if you've got a team already, I really recommend checking out the Gallup Strengths Finder. The Strengths Finder 2.0 is sort of the newest version. Mm -hmm. But you take, you go online, you take this quiz, and if you dig around, there's a, it's kind of fifty dollars, but there's, you can just get your top five for twenty bucks, and it's kind of, I think, the better deal. But you get those, these top five strengths, and it's strengths phrased in a way maybe that you wouldn't think of. They could be a little bit different. Some of mine are learner and relater and achiever, right? So I really appreciate. I get a lot of satisfaction from checking things off and getting things done. And within these, this list of 34th strengths, there's four quadrants Then I've got an Excel sheet and we kind of plot out within these four quadrants, where does everybody land? And it can help you see where the balance is of your team. All right, so your strengths are kind of in execution, mine are more in relationship building. And we don't have anyone who's really in strategy. So we, it looks like we kind of could use somebody else over here. What, re what often happens is I, we get everybody's strengths and people, sometimes they're surprised. Often they're like, oh, yeah, that makes a certain amount of sense. That's, that's stuff that I love. It helps raise awareness. Again, so where, does, where do I get energy? Where might it be best for me to spend my time? But then it, when we plot it out on this chart, we can also see where are people um, if really effective right now and why are our sales lagging? Or how come we're not following up really well? Or why isn't... You know, how come our plans aren't falling through to fruition? What's going on here? Maybe there's not as much of that, you know, executive functioning going on. So, so it's really helpful to, to just start to chip away at spending a reasonable amount of time doing this sort of awareness raising and reflecting. It's probably not five or 10 hours a week, right? That's, that's a little right. bit too much. But if we're spending zero hours on our interpersonal side, and actually it kind of brings me to this quote from Brene Brown. So Brene Brown is a researcher and she's been doing a lot of work on vulnerability and okay. actually bringing it into the workplace as well. So one of her latest books is Braving the Wilderness is Braving is kind of an acronym. And she just wrote this book called Dare to Lead. And really sort of the cutting edge neuroscience mixed with sort of just this emotional intelligence, self-awareness piece that is critical. And she just puts the rubber to the road in a really great way. So one of the quotes that I love that she shares 
And this applies, she says leaders, I think, but it really applies to any of us in relationship, whether it's personal or business. So I'll just give it a couple of times. So it says leaders must either invest a reasonable amount of time attending to fears and feelings. So I think of any of us as a business person working with others, whether it's clients or colleagues, we must spend, invest a reasonable amount of time attending to fears and feelings or squander an unreasonable amount of time trying to manage ineffective and unproductive behavior. So we're either going to invest this time in our awareness, in our connection with each other, our trust, our ability to move forward and collaborate, or we're inevitably going to squander a lot more time kind of dealing with the consequences of not having those conversations. And the challenge is we're not taught a lot of these skills in school, in business school, whatever it might be, right? So we come out and these are soft skills, right? This, you should just pick them up through context and through living your life. My question becomes, how's that working for you? Right? How's that working right. for us, right? Yeah. What are the results that we're seeing? Sure. If things are going great, awesome. When we're having challenges, and that's often I get brought in because there's conflict. Mm -hmm. Because the owners, I can't find good people. Right, you hear that a lot. <laughs> you hear that yeah. so often. And it's an understandable sense. And my question becomes, all right, how true is that? What else could be happening here? It's not about judgment. It's just about facing reality in a way that's going to hopefully improve our results, get us a little bit something different. And it kind of goes back to Thomas Jefferson. If you want something you've never had, you must be willing to do something you've never done. Right. And that takes, takes a little bit of courage. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons the, the quote you read off the page is so important because that almost puts it in business terms of you know, money in, money out type of thing. And Return that's something investment. that's, yeah, that's something that's very relatable. For whatever reason, when you read that, I was thinking of something like cybersecurity or something where you have to put that, you know, you have to put the, the time and energy in and money up front or you're going to pay for it later on. Exactly. You know, there's so many different business analogies that that, that <laughs> compares to, even though it's sort of a, a thought and feeling kind of thing, it really is more of a business analogy than anything. So I think that's why that's powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's hard to know where, what the balance is going to be. And that's part of what I sort of partner with any person, any organization, any leader to do is like, all right, let's, let's play with this a little bit and see where the balance is. And we can, we can take micro steps, right? We can lean into it. I don't really, I don't recommend doing a whole bunch up front because it doesn't, it's not sustainable. Right. If we make, try and that make that much change at once. It takes a lot of our, uh, a lot of brain energy, right? Our prefrontal cortex to do something new, do something different takes a lot more energy. Mm -hmm. So we want to build, slowly build into a habit with small sustainable steps that we can do consistently as opposed to let's try and change everything this month. Right. That also is pretty stressful for your right. team. So yeah. How important is it for the sole proprietor? How important is leadership for the sole proprietor? <laughs> I might be a little biased on yeah, this. So I know sure. that's a tough question for, yeah. for me to, to answer without the lens of just seeing what happens when there's not. Leadership. Right. And, and we can define leadership in a lot of different ways. One of my favorites is any action you take, you're leading because mm -hmm. you're showing yourself and those around you what's important to you, right? Monkey see, monkey do. That's kind of that's kind of how we operate. Sure. Um, in that way, we're all leading because right? by whatever choice you you make, you're showing yourself. All right, well this this is what I care about right now. This is what's important to me. So, in some ways, it's it's everything. Mm -hmm. um, in other ways, I think a lot of businesses get by with without having any intentionality behind their leadership or their actions. We're just kind of doing what we know to do. We've yeah. got our emotional patterning. Right? We're kind of reacting all the time instead of responding. And or we've done it this way for so many years. Why can't we just keep doing it of this Of course. Way? Especially if it worked, right? Sure. Yeah, I asked, how's it working for you? Well, it's worked great. What's going on now? I don't know, but it should. It, it's got to work again still. Let me just keep powering through. It's fascinating. Right. So... So, I mean, I think it comes back to this. Either you invest some amount of time in in leading, in building trust and relationships, in getting to know the people you're working with, clients or colleagues as fellow human beings. You don't have to be best friends. Mm -hmm. And if you have no idea what's going on in that person's life, what interests them, one of the ways I think about it is everyone we work with is a volunteer, at least in this country, right? So everyone is volunteering any additional effort. Right. They're volunteering their creativity. We're volunteering our our like inspiration and energy. Otherwise, we're just going to do the minimum to make sure we keep the job. Right. So for treating each other as volunteers and really taking an interest 
asking questions to each other. The amount of leaders I work with who, you know, come to me, Pete, I've tried everything. Like, I've given them this. I gave them a raise. Gave them some time off. Did all these different things. They still are showing up late or they're, they're not finishing. They're not hitting their deadlines. Like, I have no idea what's going on. And, and I ask, so, well, have you asked them? So, well, well, no. I mean, I told you. I've done all these things. But right. we have a block often around not knowing. We feel like we're, especially as a leader, the entrepreneur, you've had some success. It feels like you're supposed to know everything. For whatever reason, that seems to be where our culture sort of espouses. Again, it's not really conscious, but I'm raising the veil a little bit here for us. So if we recognize that, like, wow, I really have a tough time checking in and asking somebody what matters to them or what's going on. It feels inefficient, right? We got work to do. I'm not going to just ask you about your weekend. Like, I got stuff to get done here. But again, if we don't invest that time... That person could quit, and you're like, see, I can't find good people. Or they show up late. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they've got you know a sibling who's got cancer, and they're visiting them in the hospital in the morning. And maybe that feels like an excuse if they say it when they come in late that day as opposed to like, well, you've been asking them about it along the journey, and you understand. And when that person – I think the real key when we think about ROI, when that person feels seen and heard and cared about, they want to give more. Right. right. They want to volunteer that creativity and that extra time. And yeah, maybe it can't come from eight to nine in the morning, mm -hmm. but maybe it's that weekend or overnight or just making more space in their lives to, to really put in that effort and energy. So you never know. Okay. What's the process like when a, when a business reach out to you, reaches out to you? What is that first meeting like? And do you send them questions in advance to get to know the business a little bit or do you jump right into it? Um, I can do both. I can do both. Actually, one of the first exercises I do with folks is a values exercise. So I'll just send someone. <laughs> and it really depends on the level of interest of someone. So what, one thing that's really important for me is doing a complimentary initial session. And all that means is really having a conversation, just like I'm saying, as two human beings, to get to know each other to a reasonable degree to decide if we both want to work with each other. I had someone I sat with who, you know, he was he wanted to work with me, but he, he kind of kept sort of peppering, like, well, are you really going to help me? Like, how effective is this going to be? Like, I want to know. I'm going to I'm paying all this money. I want to make sure it's going to work. I said, Absolutely. You know, it makes total sense. I'll give you whatever you need to know. And he wound up not <laughs> – it was really funny. Every time I asked him a question, well, so what have you tried here? What are you thinking about doing there? What are some other – what's really stopping you from having the success that you want? Um, he had an answer. Every single – well, it's because of this, this, and this. Well, that, that. And I wound up saying, you know, sort of this is uh, – I, it's been great talk with you, and I don't think this is going to make a lot of sense to work together because you seem to have all the answers for all of your problems. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's it takes a lot of courage to say, I don't know, but I think that's an upfront piece of like, oh, I'm not sure what, what it's going to take for me. And that uncertainty is sort of the, the space in which I like to work in. Like, all right, let's get some clarity. So we do this values exercise to figure out, all right, what are the things that are most important to me? And we can do that individually, but then also for the business. So what are the values of our business? How are we actually... Um, what are we, how are we helping people at the fundamental level? You know, is a butcher just cutting meat or is he providing a, you know, fundamental piece of protein for a family meal? We could talk about the health effects of meat <laughs> at a later time, but, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I really, it's a fascinating thing because I have a scaffolding and we can actually do a strategic planning process. If someone really wants to start with what is my strategy, what are my strategic drivers or what are the problems that I'm solving? And then what are the goals, strategies, and initiatives that I'm going to use to, to implement that? We can go through that whole poor process, again, on an individual or a business level, or we can dive into one specific area. Often it is this interpersonal conflict, like what's happening here? And I'll come in and we'll start to build a few tools. So I think it's important to have some skill sets. One of my favorite is Yes And from Improv Comedy. I teach this one a lot, but it's really helpful right up front just to quickly um, apply in conversation. So instead of saying, Brian, I really like working with you, but I need you to come to work on time, mm -hmm. what happens with the butt there? Right. It ends up it erases yeah. the first thing you said, right? Sure. So do you, in the person, it's subconscious, but the person's question, do you, do you like working with me? Said, do you mean it? So say, Brian, I really like working with you, and I need you to come to work on time. Tiny little change of that, of that word, but helpful in storytelling, less so in these comparative right. situations, it really makes a difference energetically with how that person feels. And if you're being true with that first part of the sentence that you said, and this is, the reality is more than one thing can be true at once. Right? Okay. It's like kind of the power of paradox here. So yeah. In your relationships with business, do you find, are businesses looking to work with you 
for some sort of initial problem and then hoping that you'll send them on their way? Or do you think they're looking for more of an ongoing relationship? And in which do you prefer? Yeah, each, each one's so unique and different because we all are that um, I'm finding a pretty even spread. I would say it's it's kind of somewhere around 50, at least up front, kind of 50-50. Like some people are like, hey, I really have this issue. I want to help with this. And other times people are really looking for a business partner for an undetermined amount of time. One of my first clients was a the CEO of a small credit union here in Connecticut. And you know she and I met an event at an event, just kind of hit it off. We we're both actually volunteering for Connecticut financial reality fairs for high school students, these amazing days where they bring a bunch of high schools together in certain towns. I think this one was at Western Connecticut State University. And hundreds of high school students come in and we were mentoring them all to just kind of set up a simple budget and look at what things cost and kind of understanding credit and these sort of things. Really valuable. So anyway, she and I met at this this event and we just had just this shared desire to be of service, especially to help raise financial literacy and work with others. So that shared value, we just connected. And I wound up working with them for about two years on an ongoing basis. They had a team of nine people and wound up hiring actually a sort of the the right hand person to to her the CEO to so, to eventually take over for her. Okay. So it was kind of this whole culture creation process, really solidifying what are we all about, what are our values, how are we treating our customers, and who do we need to add to our team? We did this strengths finder exercise. Mm-hmm. What strengths do we need on our team? We really they identified we really need a relationship builder, someone who's got sort of more of that extroverted personality to help bring in new business. And so it was really powerful. But you know, other times just a couple of sessions and people are off off on their way. And sometimes you have to deal with some pretty difficult issues, I would imagine. So if you're mapping out an organization and they're very heavy in one area and a little bit light in another quadrant. Um, how how far will you go in recommending a personnel change? <laughs> sure. Well, again, it's a little interesting because I don't I don't make recommendations as a co- I guess you know suggestions, recommendations, yeah. whatever word you want to use. But really, I come back to asking, well, what do you really want? Like, what's most important to you, and how important is adding in this capacity to your team? You know, mm-hmm. I really I really try and leave it up to that person. Now I will paint the picture of here's what you know here's the limitations to not having this role filled, and maybe here's the opportunity for going forward. But it reminds me of the old ad, the adage: all problems contain opportunities, mm-hmm. right? And as an individual or a business, we grow when we're challenged. Right? Struggle creates growth. It's kind of I think one of the sad parts about our culture: all these hacks and quick fixes, and the sure. fact that our phone can brush our teeth basically at this point. It also means that we don't need to build much capacity in ourselves or in our organization. So it leads to anytime there's a problem, we have a lot of resistance to it right up front as opposed to, oh, wow, okay, here's the next challenge for me to face. You know, adventure starts when things go wrong. So if we can reframe to not look at challenges as inherently bad, but just as what it is, this is a challenge and something I need to overcome and whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. I might not have chosen it. But all I've got to do is make it through, right? We've just got to survive as a business through whatever challenge, and then hopefully that will create more success down the road because we have new capacity. Okay. And uh, we, we talked earlier about the Southington Chamber. So the third Wednesday of the month, there's a um, Chamber in the Morning networking event, and you're going to be adding to the uh, quality of that event. So let's talk a little bit about that. That's your first uh, presentation is going to be this this Wednesday. So how is that relationship going to work? Um, well, I'm really excited. I'm grateful to to Barbara and Ralph and the sort of the team there to be inviting me to do this. And really, the idea is kind of similar to the values exercise that I talked about. But what we want to do is start to just raise a, raise our awareness around how we're prioritizing, right? And so we call it, we're talking about learning to juggle, right? So we're all inevitably juggling to some degree, and and we've either learned how to juggle or we're kind of making it up as we go right and just like oh this be, this seems to be most important right now so i'm just going to do this or right, whatever's in front of me like oh i've got a, a customer calling yelling at me of course i'm going to deal with this problem whereas if we were able to step back a little bit and say all right yeah so these capacities in my business are kind of are most important and maybe we get some other perspectives in but you know, ultimately i think we have a lot of these answers we just have a tough time working um on the business instead of working in the business Right, so this stepping back and this reflecting, like I was saying earlier. So this is what we're going to do. I actually have some, uh, some they're really stress balls that we're going to okay. bring in with these little emojis on them. So we'll actually use these as well to start to raise not only our awareness of our 
kind of values and priorities. But along with that is this capacity of emotional intelligence, which a lot of the research is really bearing out now, really affects all these things that we've been talking about, but our ability to relate to others, understand what someone else is doing. If, if, it would, if it's what matters most to you, understand how best to sell to someone and what's going to actually influence them. But I hope it goes deeper than that into a more overall sort of well-being individually and as an organization so that we can start to notice when, you know, something's working for us or something's triggering or really holding us back. And as we start, to, emotional awareness, emotional intelligence is really about recognizing like, oh, wow, here's what I'm experiencing or here's what this person is experiencing so that we can actually take the most effective action, figure out what's going to work best as opposed to, like you said before, doing what we've always done, right. just having the same approach. And when that's not working, continuing to do it, right? It's kind of the definition of insanity. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we're going to have a lot of fun and we actually, we will actually start to learn to juggle a little bit. So I enjoy uh, some real juggling. So we'll see. There's going to be a prize for whoever um, is able to out juggle me, if that's possible, wow. if anyone's in there. Okay. So I'm excited to uh, see what kind of talent we have in the Southington region. Do. <laughs> but also, you know, just start to have this conversation and just it, even these 10, 15 minutes that we're going to take of reflection I'm really excited to hear what impact that has on people's business in the following weeks or months. Right. Because it really, again, we don't, we usually do so little that just doing a little bit can actually have a pretty massive impact. Sure, sure. So how do, how do people get in touch with you if they want you to do some business coaching with them? What's the best way to reach out? So I think just really thinking hard and manifesting it, it's going to happen. You know, just not hard. <laughs> maybe, maybe an email or phone call goes, okay. goes a little further. So, um, so my business, again, is Fresh Perspectives. Um, and it's just freshperspectivesct.org is is the uh, the URL. But probably you can also just find me on the Southern Chamber website. Okay. Under Fresh Perspectives, again, Peter Callahan, and you know, love interacting on LinkedIn as well. Happy to uh, happy to connect over email, um, which is right on my website as well. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Peter. I enjoyed it. Thanks, Thanks so much, Brian.